we were faced that our one of our system is handed is now directly connected on a power car, car power supply. Um, well, the customer had in the past, let me show you, a small system we developed with portable, with battery powered, also 12 volt. And he got the opportunity to sell it into a car, into a vehicle and said, now I need a power supply cable as it is also 12 volt. And there is an onboard voltage socket for that 12 volt. And uh, like Andreas, we said, crazy, you don't do that because it has a lot of implications. The implication raised from the power supply track, the, the normal power supply track was just about 20, 25 centimeters. Now the cold track gets 20, uh, five times, 20 times longer, five meters. That means the supply impedance increase. Um, another thing is that the battery is not only for our device, it is shared for a lot of things from the car, uh, starting uh, engine up to radio, up to other, any other things. And it changes the voltage due to motor engine is running or not running. It drops immediately when you start the engine and so on. All this is normally not taken care of on that battery powered system. So we tell them, it's not that easy just to wire the things up. So we said we need a power supply filter. Well, the customer said, well, I sold already the system. I need to deliver. I need a very fast integration. It should be easy and it should not delay the system delivery. I need the payment. Uh, on the other side, well, we have to block the noise between the car engine and our system at backward. We have to buffer these fast voltage drops so that the power DC-DC uh, converter in the system can work that out. And the system requires a low power supply impedance. Uh, maybe Ali can then show you later on a little bit more into that details, but Let's go a little bit more specific on the requirements on that filter. For sure, we need an isolation more than 40 dBs. That means anything in noise and interference from one side should not pass on to the other side and from the system backward as well. We concentrate with that filter just on that main conducted emissions. That means frequency from one kilohertz that's the lowest frequency we have in our system or frequency which could impact our system up to 10 megahertz. Everything above that has to be filtered inside the systems and is and then more going to radiated emission than to conducted emissions. Yeah, uh, it's not just the filter as an electronic part, they need also an housing. We found out that Happily, uh, uh, luckily, we got it just for a dry environment, IP20. Uh, it should be easy mounted just with screws on the on a plate. From the electrical side, we have to cope with voltages from 8 to 16 volt as a min and max. And the current between power off, no current, and up to 12 amps uh, as a peak current. One important thing for a filter, and if you're faced to a similar situation, you should also think about that, uh, is the ground, does it have a, a common ground or does a negative path of that supply runs also through that filter? That means, do you need a single line filter or does it have to be a differential line filter? In this case, we ensured that 
our system stays isolated, electrical isolated from the car ground, and therefore DC plus and DC minus runs through that filter. So now we know it's not just a cable, we have to be a little bit more uh, specific and provide something special. That special is also related to the low impedance requirement. Um, any DC-DC converter which is in that system has to be backed up by a low impedance power supply. Uh, maybe you heard about the Middlebrook criteria where the supply source impedance should be very, very much lower than the uh, input uh, of the DC-DC converter. There is also in the uh, last page then a reference to Alice's presentation explaining that Middlebrook criteria and how to work with that. One important thing, quite often forgotten, is that this criteria is only valid in the loop frequency range of the DC-DC converters. A quite common assumption is that you say the maximum switching frequency, you take the tenth of the that, and so you get your maximum loop frequency. So the loop frequency in this case is 200 kilohertz and lower. Looking a little bit more into the details of the requirements is a little bit calculation even after lunch. I hope it's not too complicated. If we go for a peak load, nominal peak load of 12 volt and 10 amps, that means our input impedance of the system is 12, uh, 1.2 ohms. If the voltage drops down to 10 volt, then we have 12 amps and the input impedance goes then lower. If the voltage goes up, then uh, it does not drain so much current and therefore it's only 8.3 8 amps or around about 1.73 ohms. That results that the dynamic input resistance is negative. That means we have a we have a dynamic input resistance of minus 9.0.91 ohms. That means anything connected which is complex on that could create an and resonance tank, it could start to oscillate. So beside of the out, uh, input capacitor, we have then also then the supply wire, which can two times five meters, it's a length of 10 meters, 10 meter length, four millimeter diameter, results in a 215 microhenry inductor. Um, so a 215 microhenry inductor, it's quite a high impedance in the frequency. If you look on that uh, at two 400 kilohertz, it's 500 ohms, it's too much. When we compared the 500 ohms with our input impedance. So we have to go down, 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 and round up at 100 ohms. We are in that range where we can say, now we are lower than uh, the input impedance of our system. That means our filter has to filter every frequency or have to provide a low impedance for any frequency above 100 ohms. Middlebrooks sends his greetings. So, we went then into the schematic, developed a filter where the core part, the filtering, is then shown here as a filter 
with a di uh, with a common mode choke. As I said, we go for a differential filter. Therefore, we have to filter the negative path as well as the positive path. We have I added a, a snubber to avoid that any thing from the outside could start to resonate resonance to not only adding a capacitor and then the resonance could start to oscillate uh, the wire could start to oscillate with this capacitor therefore this in this resistor was added a large capacitor to the low frequencies two chip bit farads which are good for the high field, high frequency and shortly before the output we have then additional two capacitors okay then put that into the simulation and we see yes we get a quite good low impedance but we have two resonance peaks one here and one is here this one is around 100 hertz that could be can be critical this one is around uh, 30 kilohertz and is damped by the internal capacitors so nice thing some suppliers like wood have also component libraries which you can then fit into the LT spice simulation and then you can run the whole simulation as a Turo said important parasitic parts of that component should be included so the advantage of taking that library parts inside is that quite some of these components have all these parasitics inside we will then see later on that this is quite good with real measurements but before we can go to that we have to get the schematic into a layout so we used a quite simple two uh, layer fr4 pcb and my colleague arranged it quite nicely so that it is quite compact for for holes to mount and possible uh, wires in and out keep in mind these wires have a diameter of around about four millimeters so it's not so easy to solder them through one hole so he decided to make two holes to split the wires up yeah uh, product needs also a housing uh, good electronics is not very good to use when it has no housing, at least not for the end customer. So remember, easy to mount for holes, IP20 means just protecting against touching, no protection against water. And we implemented that in a, as a 3D printed housing with snap rivets no screws on that i will go into that a little bit in detail maybe you're faced with the same problem as we to create also housings housing in that way that it clamps the wire here that it allows the an led to peek through the housing to indicate the power is there so uh, protects all the in internal parts and what we designed is instead of using screws we use snap rivets therefore we have i developed also a special snap rivet holder which allows a 3d print that the snap rivet goes through opens then its wings and holds the bottom and the pcb at the housing so just to show you this is the the housing and 
we can look into that housing and that's how we how I designed the housing. So quite simple, nice, and don't underestimate the effort to develop such a housing. Okay. So finally we made it. We made it in time. What's more important, you know, in total we had only from the beginning to delivery two weeks. That's why we had to speed up, do everything. Uh, you see here also how the wires are split. This is just for my probing as on uh, connecting that up with the Bode 100 because we want to know how good it is. So this is the setup uh, when you want to connect it with the Bode 100. In this way, you need also this common mode choke, which allows to break the ground loop between the output and the input, going then through that device into that test. So this is the result. Um, and I can show it to you. Yeah. So this is the impedance track directly measured with the body 100. It's just beside me if I take that camera for you. Here it is. And it shows us uh, the input impedance at 100 hertz where it gets critical is even around 150 milliohms. We see as we saw before in the simulation also this peak and then the output wire impedance. So the wire which is then from the filter up to the uh, to the system. We can also do the isolation, how good the filter acts. And as we say, we want to get sure 40 dB isolation. Uh, we get that around about 100 Hertz up to around about 10 megahertz. So we will, we fulfill that as well. Yeah, so that was the connecting cable. That's an inductor going up. This is a filter resonance we have internal. We checked it then up that the system internal capacitors will dump that for the DC-DC converters. So it's not only that the DC-DC converters have to work with the filter capacitors are also capacitors at the DC DC converter. So also a good locking. This these two results are quite nice. And the third one is even more important. Our customer was happy. Happy customers are nice customers as happy customers pay the bill. That's my contact. That was a short overview 